Hey, it's Mr. Lineski with Unit 5, Section 1. It's a very, very quick unit. We only have two sections to go through. Uh, we're talking about parts of triangles today. Uh, so we just have a lot of vocabulary to get through. So we'll kind of take a look at that. Um, so the vocab that we're looking at today is that every triangle, every single triangle, no matter what type, um, has five special lines that we can draw on them. Uh, and those five lines are called mid-segments, medians, altitudes, perpendicular bisectors, and angle bisectors. So let's take a look at what some of those things are. Um, a median of a triangle is whenever you connect the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. Um, every single triangle has three mid segments because if you think about every side has a midpoint and if you just connect the, all those midpoints together it sort of um, have three of them. Um, so here if we said that D was a midpoint um, of AB and that E was a midpoint of AC, so we would be able to say things like AE is congruent to EC. We would be able to say that AD is congruent to DB, because remember a midpoint cuts a line in half. Um, so that's all a mid-segment is. So this line DE that we would draw if we connected the two midpoints, um, that's a mid-segment. Um, the mid-segment theorem states that any mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to the opposite side and it is half um, as long as that side as well. So if you take a look at our figure here, DE, that would be parallel to BC. So those are the sides that are opposite the parallel line. Uh, so these two lines would be parallel, so we would be able to say things like corresponding angles, um, kind of use that with parallel lines here. Um, and then we would also be able to say that it's half the length. So if I knew that the length of BC was 10, I would be able to say that half of that is the length of DE, which is 5. Moving on, we have a median. So every triangle has three medians. Um, a median is when you connect an angle to a midpoint. So before we were connecting with mid-segment, midpoint to midpoint. Now we're connecting angle to midpoint. Um, basically, a median just cuts a side in half. So if I said that this line here was a median, I would know that it was cutting uh, this in half. And so I'd be able to say that these two pieces here would be congruent. Um, an altitude. An altitude is the perpendicular height um, of a triangle. And so again, every triangle has um, three altitudes that you can draw. And so for example, um, all you're doing is sort of connecting an angle and you're drawing a perpendicular line. So we're doing sort of the opposite reciprocal slope. And it sort of just meets at a 90 degree angle. So we definitely know we have an altitude when we say perpendicular. Perpendicular things meet at 90 degree angles. So we want to be looking for that right angle um, to identify altitudes. There's sort of a tricky one that is um, if you have an obtuse angle or an obtuse triangle, um, if you have an obtuse triangle, when you draw the altitude, if you think about it, it's really hard to draw a 90 degree angle from here to here. Um, so the altitude of this triangle actually is drawn on the outside. Um, so in case you ever see something where it's like a line, where there's a dotted line outside of the triangle with the 90 degrees, that's just because it's an obtuse angle and we can't really draw the altitude that way. Um, so that's an altitude. Uh, moving on, a perpendicular bisector. If you think about the name perpendicular, perpendicular we mentioned means it meets at 90 degrees. Bisector, we mentioned that that means it cuts in half. Um, and so it does exactly what the name says. A perpendicular bisector, it meets at a 90 degree angle and it cuts the line in half. Um, so it's sort of a combination of a median and an altitude. Again, it cuts a side in half and is perpendicular. So just think 90 degrees and cut in half. And then finally, angle bisector. Um, we had talked about angle bisectors in unit one. Um, in a triangle, I'm just sort of connecting a side um, and cutting an angle in half. So I would say that this angle here, like angle one, would be congruent to angle two. Um, one thing I do want to point out here is that this does not need to be perpendicular. It doesn't need to meet at a 90 degree angle. Same with medians, um, back here at median. This does not need to meet at a 90 degree angle. Um, the only ones that need to be 90 degrees are altitudes and perpendicular bisectors. Um, there is a second way to show that something is an angle bisector. So one way is to see the angle being cut in half. Uh, 
Another way is if you have sort of an angle like this, and you may see um, lines sort of drawn like this. And if I indicate that these meet at 90 degree angles, and that these are congruent, um, we would actually be able to say that this is an angle bisector. So we could sort of assume that, oh, then this angle here is congruent to this angle here. Um, so there are some theorems that go along with these things. So one of them uh, is the perpendicular bisector theorem, which basically states that um, if a point is on a perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it's equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Um, so the diagram that we have here would basically say that um, if P, or I'll say CP, whoops, lost my pen. Um, if CP line CP is a bisector of segment AB, so if I told you that it's cutting this in half, um, then we would be able to say that CA is congruent to CB. So I kind of want you to think about that for a second. So if, if this line here is the perpendicular bisector, then CA would be congruent to CB. And if you actually look at this, this looks like our congruent triangles. Uh, so we know that this is a 90 degree angle here. We have the hidden figure of the shared side. And so this is side angle side. So these two triangles must be congruent. Therefore, this side has to be congruent to this side. Um, so we're still using that triangle congruency a bit. Um, the converse to the perpendicular bisector theorem states that if a point is equidistant um, from the endpoints of a segment, then it's on the perpendicular bisector. Um, so if I have a triangle that looks like this, and if we know that this is 90 degrees here, we can assume then that XY is a perpendicular bisector. So we can sort of make the assumption here that AY and YB um, would be the perpendicular bisector. Um, and that's sort of what this is saying. So if um, XA is congruent to XB, then we would be able to say that XY is the perpendicular bisector of AB. Oops. So that's perpendicular bisectors. Um, and so now we're just going to kind of look at some example problems and how we use the vocab to solve some problems here. Um, so it says solve the following variables um, provided that the given line's a mid-segment. So mid-segment, if you remember, means I'm connecting two um, midpoints. So if these are midpoints, that has to mean that if this is five here, that Z has to also be five. So Z would be five. Um, if this is six, that means Y has to be six because it's a midpoint, cuts it in half. Um, and then we had our rule that the mid-segment is half the length of the side parallel to it. So if this is eight, then X would have to be four. So solve for those three variables here. Um, for the next one, it says use the triangle ABC where D and E are both midpoints. So we know that this is a midpoint, this is a midpoint here. Um, DE is equal to 5X minus 7 and that BC is equal to 3X. And we want to solve for X and then find what BC is. Um, so for this example here, I'm going to kind of write down some little equations here. Um, there's two things that you kind of want to remember for mid-segments. We can say stuff like little is equal to little. Um, and so that was sort of an example of what we were looking at here, that this little piece was equal to this little piece. Little equals little. Um, but if I'm comparing something like a big side, BC, to this little side, uh, DE, we would want to say something along the lines of big is equal to two times little. Um, and that's how we can sort of set this one up and solve for it. Um, so I'm going to say that the big side here, 3x, is equal to 2 times the little side, which is 5x minus 7. And so now we just distribute the 2. That's 10x minus 14. And solving for x, we'll subtract 3 from both sides, giving us 7x. Add the 14 over to the other side. Divide by 2, we get x is equal to 2. So then the problem says, what is bc? That means we have to substitute 2 back into here. So we get that bc is equal to 6. Um, so 3 times 2 is 6. Sorry, equals there. Okay, uh, so that's mid-segment. 
Let's take a look at the next problem. It says, uh, solve for x uh, based on the markings, what type of line is uw? So let's look at that question first. Let's look at uw. So uw, the key things we wanna look at is we have 90 degrees. So with that tells us it could be an altitude, but we also have these markings here indicating that it's cut in half. So that tells us that it is a perpendicular bisector. Um, and then if you remember from perpendicular bisector theorem, that if we know UW is a perpendicular bisector, we know that these two sides have to be equal. So basically we are just setting them equal to each other. So nothing too crazy. Um, subtract 3x from both sides, add 17 to the other side, giving us 26. Um, here when we divide both sides by four, yeah, we end up getting a decimal, no big deal. Uh, we get 6.5 as our answer for x. Over here we sort of have a chaotic uh, looking triangle, and we just want to know what type of line uh, each of these things are. So DC, if we take a look at DC here, all we see is that 90 degree angle. We don't have any uh, congruency marks, so DC is an altitude. Uh, if you take a look at FA, what's FA doing? FA is cutting it in half here, cutting BC in half. Uh, no indication of 90 degree angles, so that means FA has to be a median. Uh, BE, if we take a look at that, we're showing that the angles are getting cut in half, so that must be our angle bisector. And moving on to the last two problems here, it says find the value of x if AD is an angle bisector of BAC. So we know that AD is cutting these angles, um, or cutting angle BAC in half. I'm giving you the two little angles, so remember little equals little, so we would just set these things equal to each other. A lot of geometry is just setting stuff equal to each other. Um, so solving for this, subtract 2x from both sides, we get x. Uh, subtract the 10 from the other side, we get x equals 4. So that's our answer for x. And then finally, uh, find the value of x and y if AD is a perpendicular bisector. So remember, perpendicular means meets at a 90 degree angle. Bisector means cuts the line in half. Um, so we'll start with x here. So remember, little equals little. Subtract 2x from both sides, you get 3. Add 9 to both sides, giving us 21. Divide both sides by 3, we get x is 7. And then to solve for y, notice y is an angle. We don't want to do anything with 180 here. We just know that that angle, because it's an altitude or a perpendicular bisector, um, we know that that angle is going to be 90 degrees. So we actually set it equal to 90 here. Um, Add 9 to both sides, giving us 99. Divide both sides by 3, giving us y is equal to 33. All right, that is it for section 5.1. I know it, and now you know it.